Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will be discussing 1-2 and 1-4 addition to dienes. So consider this compound. What happens when we react it with HCl? First things first, find your nucleophile or thing that is going to react. Whenever you see a diene, you say, aha, you will react. And what you're going to do is attack something that's delta plus. What's the delta plus thing? Well, it's the hydrogen because it's attached to an electronegative atom, the chlorine, that is sucking electrons towards itself, leaving that hydrogen delta plus. Hence, very electrophilic and desirable to be attacked by some nucleophile where the nucleophile is going to be one of the pi bonds, a part of this diene where this diene is in the S transoid conformation right now, where if we follow the path of the double bonds, a part of the diene, one, two, three, four, I'll highlight it, one to two, two to three, three to four. If I draw this over here, what do I get? I get a zigzag or a chair or a lightning bolt, however you want to look at this, but we can tell that this is not the S cisoid. When you have the S transoid for a 1 2 or 1 4 addition reaction, it's always best to choose the less sterically hindered pi bond as your nucleophile. And this is just a rule of thumb. It's not going to work every single time, but most of the time with the S transoid conformation, the less sterically hindered pi bond is the pi bond that's more likely to react first. So highlighting the two electrons in between carbons one and two, part of that pi bond, it's going to flick out and grab that hydrogen, two in. The two out will be the two electrons in the HCl bond going up onto the chlorine. So let's say carbon number one grabs the hydrogen. Then what happens to carbon number two is carbon number two will have lost an electron hence has to become cationic. So what happens is carbon number one grabs that hydrogen, boom, and carbon number two becomes cationic. The chlorine, which gained two electrons, will become anionic. So we now have an electrophilic center and a nucleophile. So the cozy place for this nucleophile would be attacking carbon number two because opposites attract. So two in, and you get your first product. So drawing that bond in between the chlorine and carbon number two, we can now see why this would be called a one, two addition with respect to the labeling of our diene. Carbon number one, grab the hydrogen and carbon number Two, grab the chlorine, hence a one, two addition. It's referring to where the hydrogen adds and where the chlorine adds with respect to the diene. And the labeling goes, you label one to four and carbon number one and two will be the first carbon-carbon bond that reacts first. Then three and four is the other pi bond that reacts second. Now to draw your 1,4 addition product, this would be the second root where we're going to draw the product coming from our carbocation intermediate. So redrawing that structure. We can think that the chlorine is not in Antarctica anymore. It is in fact in Hawaii. So it doesn't feel the need to go home just yet. It is hanging out at the beach, surfing, really enjoying its time, right? So what this does is two things. It leaves time for resonance hybrids to be drawn. So how do we draw a resonance hybrid? Look for two electrons in a pi bond. These two electrons can go two over. So now... Carbon number two gets to share this charge with carbon number four. So this is a stabilizing effect because no atom really wants to have a charge. 
Therefore, if two atoms can share a charge, they will both be more happy overall. So now carbon number four is cationic. And this charge is being shared between the two carbons. We can also see, highlighting the double bond substitution, that we now have a three prime double bond. Whereas for the kinetic product, we had a two prime double bond, two prime. Whereas this is now three prime. So this will be our more stable product, hence the thermo. And then after you draw your resonance hybrid, step two is then the nucleophile attacks. So it was patient. It was at the beach. Now it's like, you know what? The sun's gone down and I'm ready to go home. And its home is the place it loves where nucleophiles, since they are nucleus loving, love the nucleus. So two in. And we can draw our thermodynamic product. So now, drawing my product, let's look at why this product would be called the 1,4 product. So the chlorine now attaches to carbon number 4 because it attacked it. So new bond is made. So now we can see in the first example in the kinetic case, the hydrogen added to carbon number 1. And the chlorine added to carbon number two. In the second example, in the thermodynamic example, the hydrogen still added to carbon number one, but now the chlorine adds to carbon number four. So one, four, addition. Boom. All right, so before we move on, I want you to notice something. So for this example, it just happened that our kinetic product ended up being our 1-2 addition product because the double bond was less substituted than the double bond that we got when we showed our 1-4 addition product, where the 1-4 addition product ended up also being the thermodynamic product. But I want to be clear here that this is just something that ends up happening, but it does not happen all the time. So sometimes you could have some starting material and your 1-2 addition product could end up being your kinetic and your thermodynamic product. So yes, a lot of the time, your 1-2 addition product does end up being the kinetic. And the 1-4 addition product does end up being the thermodynamic product. But this is not always the case, okay? So now I'm going to go into number one. I'm going to explain the general procedure to go about solving these problems so how to generally take a diene and get your one two and your one four addition product how to choose what double bond and where to put the carbocation and then i'm going to do an example where the one two addition product ends up being both your kinetic and your thermodynamic product so you might have some questions and rightfully so so let's go back to the very beginning and address some of those concerns that you probably have so I told you, right, that I was going to attack the hydrogen with this first pi bond because it was the less hysterically hindered pi bond, a part of this S transoid conformation. But why did the other pi bond not react first? So let's look at both intermediates and address why I chose that top pi bond. Like, what's the real reason? So let's say a hydrogen is grabbed by this end carbon. What do we get? Well, we get a carbocation. If the hydrogen is grabbed by the first carbon, the carbocation is there. What about if I use these two electrons and I grab from this carbon? Boom, grab a hydrogen. What do I get now? Well, the carbocation would be there and the hydrogen would be there. So why is this structure much better than this one? I'm going to give you a second to think. Then I'm going to tell you the answer. We have to look at the, the carbocation, okay? And ask when we're deciding which pi bond reacts first, which pi bond reacting results in the more stable positive carbon, okay? So this is a three prime carbocation. There's three areas of alkyl donation that act as electron gun throwers. 
that throw electrons towards a positive charge. Therefore, since opposite charges attract, this is stabilizing. Here we have a two prime carbocation. There's only two areas of alkyl donation. So since our trend goes, one prime is less stable than two prime, which is less stable than three prime, this structure wins. And from there, we chose to draw our kinetics and our thermodynamic products. And we vetoed this route. Now you might have two more questions. See, in both of these examples, I chose to put the hydrogen on the two end carbons of the diene. So if our diene is this four carbon chain where there's two pi bonds separated by this sigma bond, I chose to either put the hydrogen on with respect to this labeling okay this labeling would not be the labeling you would choose if you ended up putting the hydrogen on carbon number four via this labeling that would actually be carbon number one for your one two addition product one four addition product but this labeling is just so you and me can communicate right now if i put the hydrogen on carbon number one which is the first carbon in the chain or the other end of the chain carbon number four I get this and what did I do I leave a positive charge on one of the two carbons a part of that initial sigma bond why did I do that why did I not put the carbocation on the first and last carbons so in comparison to so I'm gonna say versus Hold with me. I promise this will make sense in a second. So this time I'm going to put the positive charge on the last carbon. So I'm going to put the positive charge here and grab the hydrogen there. Or I'm going to put the hydrogen there and the positive charge there. So Comparing structures 1 and 2 versus 3 and 4, what's the difference? I'm going to give you a second to think once again. Hmm, is it about the stability of the carbocation? For this, it is actually not. It's the fact that in structures 3 and 4, you have now broken conjugation. You cannot draw a resonance hybrid. That is bad because electrons like to play together. So you essentially just were the fun police when you choose to grab the hydrogen on the two carbons, a part of that initial sigma bond. If you put that hydrogen there, you are the fun police and you just wrecked all the fun. You showed up to the house party and you said, okay, everybody go home. When you put the hydrogen on one of the end carbons, you keep the fun going. You show up and you're like, you know what, guys? I was a teenager once. You guys keep on partying. And we can then draw... A resonance hybrid there or a resonance hybrid there for these two structures three and four you cannot draw a resonance hybrid nope what about here nope because you have a neutral carbon there you need a carbon with a charge or some conjugation you have broken the conjugation that is very bad so moral of the story you only have two options when you have any diene you can either put let's say you have some r1 and r2 there the positive charge on the green carbon or the pink carbon those are your only two options because if you put the positive charge on the blue or the purple carbon, a part of that initial diene, you break the conjugation. So let's say I put the hydrogen on the blue carbon and then the green carbon becomes cationic. And then that pi bond, nothing, nothing changes. So after I do this, I must always compare to the other root, so always try the other pi bond and see which intermediate gives you a more stable carbocation. So this is kind of a little template for doing these reactions. 
So this is going to be step one, is react both of the pi bonds and see which intermediate is more stable. So your other option is to put the carbocation on the pink carbon and put the H on the purple. So here we end up with both two primes, right? Because this is a template. Well, let's say in your real example, one of these is going to actually be a three prime. You always go with the more stable positive carbon. But if you do get a tie, draw a resonance structure for both and see, let's say I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add um, another carbon here. Instead of ours, I'm just gonna actually make these CH3 groups. A tie, step one, we have a tie. What do I do next? Well, I have to draw my resonance hybrids. See if I can resolve this tie. Two in. What do I get? Okay, now I have, ooh, ooh, I have a three prime carbocation that's now on that purple carbon. What about here? If I draw a resonance hybrid, two over. I get a two prime carbocation. Nothing changes. Make sure I didn't add or drop the carbon anywhere. Now comparing these two structures, structures number star and square, which structure is more stable? Well, the one with the more stable carbocation. So we would proceed with this route. But now when it comes to adding in that HCl, your actual intermediate is still this structure from here and only here. If I want to draw my kinetic kin with some X minus, what would I do? Well, the X minus is going to directly attack that carbon and you get your one, two addition product, which ends up on the green carbon. This is one, two addition. But I want you to notice something here. So this is our one, two addition product, right? And in most cases, like I said in the first example, this also ends up being your kinetic product. But here, we can see that this double bond is tertiary. We have a tertiary double bond. This is quite stable. So unless the one, four addition product gets me a quaternary, quaternary, I can't pronounce things, four prime double bond, then our kinetic product, kinetic, is also going to be our thermodynamic product. So this product in my mind right now might also end up being the thermodynamic product because it's going to have the more substituted double bond. So let's just prove this theory. So going back to our intermediate, let's draw a resonance structure from here to over. Moving that double bond. The carbocation is now on the three prime carbon. So from here, what happens after you draw your resonance structure, then the nucleophile will attack. So X minus is gonna come in and go to in. Da, 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 da. X, wait, okay, so if this is my H, one, two, three, four, one, four addition product, one, four addition. Hmm, but it's not my thermodynamic product because the double bond here is only two prime. This is only a two prime double bond. Therefore, our one, four addition product is not our thermodynamic product. In fact, our one, two product is our kinetic and our thermodynamic product. So sometimes the one, two can be both. Yeah, I hope this made sense and I hope this video helped. Please make sure to leave a like, comment, save, and or subscribe to my channel if you like my content. It will help other students just like you also find my content and hopefully hate chemistry a little bit less than they did before they watched this video. I hope you have a great day. Bye.